So if you're interested in hearing some of my ideas for some ways for you to make passive income that have generated me over $408,000 a year, you are gonna love today's video. So passive income, what is it? Basically, in my mind, passive income is only when you invest your money or do something or do the work one time, and then on a regular reoccurring basis, you are getting money for it, right? You're not having to continue to work on it at a daily, weekly, monthly basis, right? Give you some examples, right? Pete and Pedro, my grooming company, not passive income. I make income from it, but I'm having to work. I'm having to put out fires. I'm answering emails. Like I am invested and engaged in that business seven days a week, right? T. Shanley, same sort of thing. My YouTube channel, Alpha M YouTube channel, where I'm doing promotional videos, same thing. Now, the money I make from YouTube advertising on that video or old videos, that is passive income. But a lot of these things that if you do a little search for like best passive incomes or 2024, you're gonna get a lot of things that aren't actually like passive. Like you've gotta work, you've gotta do it, you've gotta figure it out, you've gotta basically crack the code you know, once and then you've gotta keep working at it in order to keep that money rolling in. Now, some of these have less barriers to entry than others. There are some that are gonna require more cash than others, but the truth is that for me, I have basically figured out how to make $408,000 in passive income. I'm gonna tell you real quick how I do it, all right? I've got three rental properties, all right? Now, the truth is that it's a lot easier to make passive income when you actually have money or you have made money, all right? Trying to create something that's passive income from nothing, a little bit more challenging, but it's possible. I'm gonna share some of those ideas a little bit later on in this video, all right? But I'm gonna go over how I make $408,000 a year in passive income, all right? So Salon Posta, right? I bought that building, I invested money, I fixed it up, and now I rent it to Salon Posta, right? I own the building, I'm the landlord, and I make $10,000 a month, all right? That's $120,000 a year I'm making off of that property. This does not include the income that I generate from being partners in that business that I actually am not working at day to day, which is another passive income opportunity for me. But that is that like extra, like what the business generates and what I make from that, that is not included in that 408,000. Talk a little bit about business ownership in a second. All right, I have another rental unit that's right next to my office. I rent it out to um, a wealth management company. I make $6,000 a month on that. So basically that is, what is that? $72,000 a year. And then I also have a home that I rent out for $3,000 a month, which is $36,000 a year. And so monthly in rental income, I'm making $19,000. Call it $20,000, right? That's awesome. I spent the money to buy the assets. I don't have debt on any of the assets. And so all that money that I'm generating is passive income. I get a check every month. I'm not having to go and really manage those properties. I just collect rent every single month. That, in my opinion, is like passive income. Right, owning an apartment complex, getting rent, passive income. I also make on average about $15,000 a month from YouTube in terms of YouTube pays me for the advertisements that they place on all of my videos. Not the videos that I'm doing talking about or promoting products, right? It's just the ads that you see at the beginning of the videos. I make around $15,000 a month. Now in the old days when I had like crazy like 20 million views a month, I was making literally some months like 30, 40, $50,000 a month. All right, because my views have come down, obviously, the money has come down, but it's still 15 Gs in passive income. And so all in, you know, I'm at around 408,000 from those passive income sources. Now, I have other investments, I've got other mutual funds, and I've got money in the stock market and things of that nature, which also is passive income, which is something, and the second thing I'd recommend each and every one of you do is start investing, right? It's never been easier or more affordable or accessible for the lay investor, somebody who doesn't know all that much, to basically set up an account, fund it, put money in, all right? If I was going to recommend, I would say go with Vanguard. Vanguard, in my opinion, is like the best if you're looking to basically have somebody kind of, you know, you set it and forget it, right? Or once you have $50,000, something most people don't know, if you invest 50,000 bucks with Vanguard, then you actually get somebody that is managing your money, all right? Long story short, I'm not a financial expert, so everything I say is simply just my opinion. All right, do your own research, do your own math, do your own thinking, because I am not that smart, all right? So anyway, um, investing money in the stock market, the S&P 500, right? It will, over time, pay you dividends. That's why people invest and why they tell you, hey, you gotta set up a 401k, set up an investment account, because over time, 
it starts to add up and it starts to compound. And as it grows, you make more money. This also is completely passive income. But the downside to that is that it is a little bit more risky, right? You can lose all that money or a lot of that money. Or if you buy a stock that's like not really super great, like you can, you can take, a, take a bath, right? You can lose a bunch of money. I've lost a ton of money, all right? I've also invested in other companies, right? Thinking that, okay, someday this is gonna pay off for me. Another opportunity for me to use the cash that I've earned give it to somebody to actually leverage and use to make money. And when they do, I'm going to get a percentage of that. Now, the good news is that when you do this successfully, like I have done with Salon Posta, you've got great operators, you've got great people, you know, that are running a business. You've got great staff members, great team members, and the business is thriving and profitable. You get a distribution every year. This is great, right? This once again is passive income because I'm not in there every single day, breaking rocks or putting out fires, but when you risk money and you invest in a business, it also can go to zero. I lost, I'm not gonna tell you the whole story right now, but I invested in a company that I believed in that went to zero and I invested $150,000 in that. Now, I was this close to being the smartest guy in the room because if it would have worked out, I probably would have made a few million dollars off of that investment. Bigger risk, bigger reward, but the bigger opportunity there is to actually lose your money, which brings me to another lesson I'd like to just share with you. Never invest more money than you can endure losing. It's not don't invest money you're not comfortable losing because that's what a lot of people say. Never invest more than you're comfortable losing. I'm not comfortable literally losing a dollar, right? That bothers me. It's what you can endure. Can you risk it? Can you invest this money? And if it goes to zero, will you survive? Or will you be eating ramen noodles in the back of your car? All right, that is what you have to ask yourself. But you have to understand that there are some that are bigger risks, but typically with these, you are gonna have bigger reward. Now, for me, I don't invest in cryptocurrency. I've never really gotten into it. I never really understood it. I started to learn, but for me, I've always just focused on other things like real estate for me is one of the things that I really love, all right? I also started to look at investing in apartment buildings. Like once you have the funds or you can raise it or you can go to the bank and get a loan and it's not gonna be a 10% interest rate or 20% interest rate, right? You can leverage other people's money. For me, like I said, I paid cash for everything. So everything I generate on a monthly basis is cash in my pocket, right? It's profit. Now it's profit only after you basically account for how much money you put into it, all right? So anyway, I'm off track. But when interest rates are super high, it's really difficult to borrow other people's money, invest it, and then get a return, you know, because, well, the interest rate is too high and you're paying the bank a lot of interest. And the reason why I pay off all my assets when I can is because it makes me feel better. A, I can sleep at night. I also hate paying other people interest in making them rich, which is another way to make passive income. And that is loaning people money, right? Now, not something I would recommend. I don't recommend you get into this because honestly, if somebody's bad with their money or needs your money, chances are they're gonna be bad with your money and you're probably not gonna get your money back. But loaning people money, which is essentially kind of what you're doing when you invest in their business or their stock market or whatever it is, you're loaning them money or investing it in their company. And as a result, you're going to get paid some type of interest, dividend or return, right? It just makes sense. All right. Something else that makes sense is investing in more stable things like money markets, right? Give you an example. I have a money market account with a lot of money in it, right? Every single month I see passive income that gets generated. Literally, it's like, $10,000, $15,000. As the money goes down, the amount that I'm paid goes down as well. But having money in some type of high performing or higher interest bearing money market account is a better option than having it in a checking account or a savings account. Does that make sense? But in order to do that and to make that really truly passive income, you need money, right? So how are you gonna build money? How are you gonna make money? And what are some other passive income ideas, all right? So the one thing that we talked about just briefly is a YouTube channel or some type of you know, channel, whether or not it's on Instagram or TikTok or wherever, where you are putting out content and then you're making residual income on a regular basis on past things that you've put out, right? Now, the truth is that you've got to do the work in order to get out there, but if you are in some of the more targeted and more high paying categories in terms of what you're talking about, you can make a ton of money, right? Give me an example, like housing. If you're talking about housing, right? Amazing, investing, amazing, cars, amazing, right? There are certain demographics and niches that pay a much higher CPA. So for me, 
right? Talking about men's style and grooming and shaving your balls, I might make like $6, $7 per thousand impressions. Whereas the car people or investment people could be making $100 per thousand impression. The money just goes crazy in some of these more high demand niches. Why do they do that? Well, because the advertisers that are advertising on those specific targeted ads or channels pay more money per you know, impression. And so it's just smarter, in my opinion, if you are gonna be doing and going into YouTube or some type of content driven side hustle to make passive income, it just makes sense that you think about the category that you're going into to make sure that it actually pays you well enough. Because there are some, I'm sure, that pay you even less. Now, if you're talking about something that's controversial or YouTube demonetize you, like demonetize you, you're gonna make zero. So really be thoughtful and mindful about what you're going to be talking about. All right, something else that I think is an amazing opportunity is basically affiliate marketing. All right, now affiliate marketing takes a while to build up, right? You need to build a website that gets a lot of traffic, an Instagram account that builds up a lot of traffic or whatever, right? You've got to do the work to get a lot of traffic. But once you do, you can monetize it by getting affiliate links from all these different vendors or different websites or different products. And if you talk about them, you promote them, you're going to be basically getting money or a little bit of money every time somebody goes through your website, your Instagram account, your YouTube in order to go and actually check out and buy, right? The other day we were on an, uh, the White Label Empire call and one of the business people that were on there was talking about, hey, I've got a huge Instagram account with like 50,000 followers, but it's all on tiny homes. What can I do, right? Now, this dude also built some other Instagram accounts by posting pictures about like tennis and cars and stuff of that nature. He didn't really have that much interest in it, but he just knew that if he would build the account, at some point he could monetize it. And so after kind of brainstorming, what we decided is you gotta build a website. And then you become basically like the go-to place for like, you know, people looking for like tiny homes. And then you go to all these places that are selling products for tiny homes or that are selling tiny homes specifically, have a website that you drive traffic to. People go there and you're gonna have a lot of traffic because you already do with your Instagram account. And you're gonna make money every time somebody goes through there and buys something or shops for something with these other vendors, right? Affiliate marketing is another amazing passive income. You build it once, you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. Some other brick and mortar um, businesses that I think would probably be awesome in terms of passive income is laundromats and car washes. I love the idea of both of those businesses. Um, you know, each of them comes with its pros and its cons, but you know, it's one of those things where if you have the finances or the money or the experience in those niches or those areas, you know, you could probably kill it, right? There are a lot of people that are selling businesses. And the other thing I just want to mention, if you are somebody that has cash or you can get cash or you can get a loan, there have never been more amazing businesses that are for sale. And the reason is because a lot of these baby boomers, right? People like my parents are now wanting to retire that have already built businesses. And so you can go on a place like LoopNet right? And search for things. You can search for commercial properties. You can search for apartment buildings. You could also search for businesses for sale in your specific area. And you may be surprised. I am every time I go, I literally look like almost daily to see just what's for sale and what's going on because I'm always kind of like interested in creating other passive income opportunities for myself. It's always amazing that there are some of these like small little like businesses and side hustles that are relatively inexpensive to get into. Like 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, like whatever. And that is relative, you know, it's, it's much cheaper to do that than buy like an, an apartment building. But it's amazing to me because it also will tell you like how much revenue it generates, if there's an owner operator or if it's got management staff. And so if you are somebody that can build a reserve of cash and you wanna create passive income, buying an ex existing business that already has customers, already has a staff, already has a system in place, you're just the owner and you allow them to continue operating it, it's another passive income opportunity. Parking spaces, all right, uh, parking lots, another amazing passive income opportunity. You buy it once and then every day, every month, every whatever, people park and they have to pay to park, right? Or you do what I do with Salon Posta, the building right next to me, I literally pay like $1,200 a month for I think it's like 15 parking spaces. I pay it to the guy who owns the building and the warehouse next to Salon Posta, but I needed the parking spaces. And so he literally is getting passive income of like $1,200 or $1,300 every single month from simply leasing us the parking spaces. Some other things that you can rent, right? Your car, 
Toro.com, another way that you could rent, rent your car or buy additional cars, rent those out. Like the market is amazing. There's a huge business in renting out, you know, premium cars, but I'm not even talking about premium. There's a market for renting out like any car, honestly. Um, that does come with its pros and cons, obviously, but it's just something to start thinking about. Pressure washer. If you've got a pressure washer, right? A lot of people are looking to rent a pressure washer in your area, all right? Or ladders or any of your stuff. If you've got a lot of acreage, you could basically rent storage for like SUVs or boats or campers. Like a lot of people are renting out their property for people to store things on their property. Which brings me to another passive income opportunity and that is storage units. Now, once again, this one does take a lot of money in order to get started, but, and here's the thing, it's not necessarily just about you having the cash in order to do it because a lot of these businesses do take experience, right? They also are gonna need somebody to manage it and run it. But my thinking is if you can pull a bunch of your buddies together, friends together, all right, start a company, right? And then invest this money, you know, using all of your money is another easier way to basically lower the barrier to entry to get into some of this. You could create an LLC that basically is about investing in some of these smaller passive income opportunities, right? And so your LLC could buy, you know, together you pull your money, you buy like different things. It's almost like a fund that you're investing in, in order to buy other assets that are producing revenue that's then paid to your LLC that you're then taking a distribution, which brings me to the last thing I just want to talk about, which brings me to the last passive income idea, and that is starting a business. Starting a business using your capital, but not using your manpower. And what I mean by this is there are a lot of people out there that are looking to start businesses. A lot of people you probably know that have the idea, they're ready to work it, they've got a great idea, but they just need the money. How can you leverage the cash that you have earned through your day job or some of these other passive income or side hustles, right? How can you use that and leverage it to start another business that will grow and then you take a percentage of, of the profit? Salon Posta is the perfect example, right? Where I am part owners in a business, I leverage my network, um, I help somebody start a business that I was friends with, but I also get some benefit from the business being successful. But if it isn't successful, I've got to eat that as well. And so that's the other thing you just got to understand. Like we mentioned earlier in this video, all right, with great opportunity comes great risk. In terms of other passive income opportunities, guys, I would love to hear it. Down below, what is something that you could do or you could start that would generate passive, truly passive income? Not like a side hustle. We'll talk about that some other time. I want to know about passive income. Whereas you make the money, you deploy it, you invest it, and then you get returns on that and you're not having to actually get your hands dirty. Those, in my opinion, are amazing businesses, but they're few and far between. They also take a lot of cash a lot of times in order to start, but there are others that can be started for very little startup cash. It might require you to work a little bit harder or invest your time, but the bottom line is this. If you can learn to make money while you're sleeping, that ultimately should be the goal.